So hey gang, good to be around the table again today and uh, another great topic. As usual, we're going to talk today about standard diversification versus asset class diversification and why it's important that clients understand the difference and why we think asset class diversification is a good thing to look into. So, you know, the, the best place to start is, Dan, maybe you kick us off. What is standard diversification as most people know it? Well, diversification in and of itself, when people hear the word, they think diversification is going to mean safety or more conservative, right? I'm going to diversify my risk. And to some degree, that's true. But if I were to tell you that I've got $250,000 in eight different bank accounts, am I truly diversified or is all my money really sitting in the same type of asset class, right? It's all bank money, really not diversified in anything other than the title of the bank itself. So true diversification in the modern portfolio theory uh, world would be having stocks, having bonds, international, small cap, mid cap, and that's, that's diversification, and that's what people consider to be a safer way to invest. But if we look historically, even those that were diversified in 2008 and 2001 and 2002 still lost an average of about 30 to 40 percent. And so while it does diversify the risk, it doesn't always necessarily lower the risk like asset class diversification would. Yeah, so we get asked all the time, what's the difference between standard diversification and asset class diversification? Well, you know, there's, there's thousands of investments, as we all know, but we believe there's three characteristics that describes every investment out there. It is return, liquidity, and capital preservation, okay? Now, if you're retired, you're close to retirement, you need all three of those characteristics as part of your money, right? Return, capital preservation, and liquidity. But here's the thing. You are not guaranteed all three of these characteristics in any one asset class. So let's take the stock market. We love the stock market. It's an inflation hedge. There's volatility in the stock market. You can get a good return if the market goes up. Stocks, bonds are completely liquid, but you're not guaranteed capital preservation. It kind of on the other side of the equation, you can go to a traditional bank or something that's principal protected, and you're going to get capital preservation, and you can get a decent return potentially, not what you're going to get long term in the market, but you also might have a limited time commitment over here. And so the, bo the bottom line is you need all three of these characteristics. Asset class diversification believes that your, your money should be spread out in different asset classes where you're accomplishing these three characteristics across those asset classes. Yeah, and I, I know this doesn't sound very complex, but one of the things that I often tell clients is just think of it this way. You need some of your investments zigging when another zags, whereas in so many cases, they're diversified, but they all go one way. They either all go up or they all go down. But if you have some that are doing something different, then even if it's a really bad year, you always have a place to go that you can count on to draw money from and so on. And again, when you think about diversification, Patrick, I think about tax diversification too and how important that is. Yeah, Pete, we always talk about the three buckets, the taxable, the tax deferred, and then the tax free and trying to make sure that you've got an allocation between those that, that makes sense because you want to pay some of those taxes now, you're going to have to pay them anyway so you can guarantee a 0% tax rate in the future. Yeah, and I, I think again, most people just think of, you know, their money, let's, let's pay the taxes in the future, but let's not think about paying any taxes now to pay less in the future. Again, you've got tax diversification, investment diversification, there's a lot of different things, Dan. There are, and, and when you're working, regular diversification is just fine when you're accumulating. Sure. Just diversify your investments in the market, really be more aggressive when you're younger and try and accumulate enough to one day hopefully feel confident to retire. But that standard diversification, as you mentioned, John, it doesn't give us principal protection, mm -hmm. right? The market has risk. All market investments have risk. It's not always a great income producer either. You think about retirement. What's the single biggest thing people are going to want and need in retirement? It's income. And if you're investing in an investment that continually goes up and down, as long as the market only goes up, things are going to be pretty good. But what happens if the market starts to go down? You're pulling money off of that investment. If you don't have asset class diversification where some things aren't going down when the other is, retirement could be a little bit dicey and I can I can tell you this for clients we've met with that haven't had it it's pretty uncomfortable yeah and again it's it's going against the old let's have all our eggs in one basket because if you do that basket goes bad then you're in trouble so 
Uh, it's very important to always think about this uh, concerning taxes, your investments, and also estate planning, making sure that they, they've spoken into that, uh, Ryan. So again, great topic here today. We could go so much further, but uh, again, we'll, we'll get on another one soon.